Just like Native Americans passed down their stories from generation to generation because they had no written language, I'm going to share a Pomo story with you today. I'm not gonna show you the words, just listen to the story um, to see if you what you can understand about Pomo culture. So this story is called Coyote and the Grasshoppers. Uh, it's retold by Gloria Dominic and it's illustrated by Charles Reasoner. This is a story of long ago. Once there was a sparkling lake. The Pomos who lived in the grassy hills nearby called it Clear Lake. From its crystal waters, the people fished and no one ever went hungry. In the waters of Clear Lake, the beauty of the wide sky of the Great Spirit was reflected for all to see. But in time, a drought fell upon the land. Little by little, the waters of Clear Lake began to dry up. The tasty fish died. The mud at the bottom of the lake turned to dust. Deep cracks, like the bare branches of trees, appeared where one the glittering water had once the glittering water had shone. The sun blazed day after day, and the pomos grew hot and thirsty. Children cried for a drop of water to drink and a bite to eat. But there was no water, and there was no fish to eat. Birds and other animals became scarce. Plants withered, and there was not a berry to be found. The pomos gathered together. What can we do to bring the rain? asked the elder. A wise old woman answered him. We must ask the medicine men. The medicine men did all they could. They sang chants to bring water to the land, but no rain came. The people gathered and danced for rain, but still none came. One day, Coyote was roaming the dry land. As he searched for a bit of water to drink, he heard a sound. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Coyote looked up and could not believe his eyes. A large cloud was moving across the land. What is this strange sight, he wondered. As the cloud moved closer, Coyote saw it was a swarming mass of grasshoppers, too many to count. The chirping of the grasshoppers filled Coyote's ears with a loud buzzing noise. Coyote watched as the grasshoppers ate everything in their path. Each blade of grass disappeared as the insects passed over the hills. This made things even worse for the pomos. Without the seeds from the grass, the people could not make thick mush that was now their only food. Coyote could not understand why these terrible things were happening. I will ask the great spirit what to do, he said. Perhaps there is a way to help the pomos and to get a bit of water for myself. Coyote threw his head back to howl, but his throat was so parched and dry, he could only make a small rasping sound. But still, the great spirit answered him. Why do you call me, he asked. Times are hard for the pomos and for all creatures, said Coyote. Our lakes are dry, our food is scarce, and now to make things worse, ugly grasshoppers are eating everything in sight. We must bring water back to Clear Lake. I will tell you what to do, said the great spirit, if you are hungry. Eat your fill of grasshoppers, then all else will follow. Coyote did not like this advice. Eat grasshoppers, he said. They do not look very tasty. All creatures on earth are on earth for a reason, said the great spirit. You will discover the reason for grasshoppers if you do as I say. Reluctantly, Coyote trotted off among the insects. I hope great spirit is right, he grumbled. He quickly snapped his head back and forth among the grasshoppers, catching great mouthfuls of them. Gulp, gulp, down his throat they went. Although the grasshoppers jumped and tickled his throat, Coyote had to admit that they were quite filling. He continued to run over the hills, gobbling as many of the insects as he could. Finally, Coyote couldn't eat another bite. He lay down on his back to rest. His stomach was swollen with the huge meal he'd just eaten. Then Coyote heard a voice. It was the great spirit. Why have you stopped eating? There are so many grasshoppers left. Oh, I am so full. There is no room for a single grasshopper, moaned Coyote. Nonsense, said the great spirit. Do you want to help the pomos? Oh, yes, said Coyote. Then eat, answered the great spirit. Oh my, look at his belly. Poor guy. Coyote pulled himself to his feet. Again, he trotted off among the grasshoppers, eating all he could. 
The only way he could force down another one down his throat was to think of the hungry Pomo children. He knew fewer grasshoppers meant there would be more grass for the Pomo's mush. At last, Coyote could eat no more. Great spirit, he called, I've eaten almost all the grasshoppers, but I will burst if I eat the few that are left. Don't worry, said the great spirit. You have done well, but I have another task for you. Coyote yowled in disbelief. He was so full he could hardly move. How could he possibly perform another task? Do you see the grasshoppers that you have not eaten? Asked the great spirit. Coyote nodded. Follow them, said the great spirit. Coyote was so full it was hard for him not to get up. Finally, he managed to sit. The last of the grasshoppers were moving in a line across the hills. With a weary moan, Coyote struggled to stand, but he could not. Again, the great spirit spoke. Think of the hungry children. Coyote did. The thought gave him the strength to stand. He set off after the grasshoppers, and to his surprise, they led him straight to the patch of dry dirt that used to be Clear Lake. Weary and still too full, Coyote was about to sink into a heap and take a long nap. And then he heard a small sound. Gurgle, gurgle. Coyote knew that sound. Could it be? Yes, in the middle of the dry earth that was once a lake, Coyote saw a tiny spring. The little bit of water made a happy sound as it bubbled out of the ground. Then Coyote heard a familiar voice. Do not stop now, said the great spirit. You have work to do if you are to help the Pomos. Dig as deeply as you can at the spring. Oh, I cannot, said Coyote. I am too full. Dig, urged the great spirit. Coyote slowly dragged himself to the spring. He took a small sip. The water tasted so sweet. Then he began to dig. He dug and dug and dug. The deeper he dug, the more water came out of the ground. It ran swiftly from the hole Coyote made, rushing and swirling to fill the bed of the lake. When at last the water stopped running, Coyote looked out upon the beautiful lake. Tired as he was, he raced to the villages of the Pomos, yowling and howling as loudly as he could. The villagers hurried out of their huts when they heard all of the noise. Coyote continued to howl. Come to the lake, Coyote cried. Come drink the sweet, clear water. But the people did not understand what he was trying to tell them. The wise men and the wise women gathered. What is the matter with Coyote? They asked one another. Perhaps he has gone mad with thirst, suggested one. Eh, he's only begging for food, said another. But a small child saw the fullness of Coyote's belly and knew that the animal could not be hungry. He listened again to the loud howling. Then the boy thought he heard the great spirit whispering in his ear. I know why Coyote is howling, the child said. He says the water has come back to the lake. The Pomos ran excitedly to the lake. Coyote bounded alongside them. From the top of the hill, the people stopped and stared. The little boy's words were true. The waters of Clear Lake shimmered in the sunlight. The people drank and quenched their thirst. Coyote's heart was full of happiness at the sight. But then he heard a buzzing sound. The grasshoppers! In his excitement, he had forgotten all about the remaining insects. Again, Coyote heard the voice of the great spirit. I told you that all creatures have a purpose. Now you will find out the reason for grasshoppers. Chase the last of the grasshoppers into the lake. Coyote did as he was told. Yapping and snapping, he ran after the insects. The people watched in amazement. They had never seen Coyote act this way before. The grasshoppers jumped nearer and nearer to the water to escape Coyote's snapping jaws. Then, buzzing and buzzing, they hopped into Clear Lake. As they did, each grasshopper became a shining silvery fish. Away the fish swam darting through the beautiful water. Now the people cheered. The fish are back in Clear Lake, they cried. We will not go hungry. Coyote let out one final happy yowl. At last he understood the words of the great spirit. He also learned that a heart that is strong and unselfish can help others. 
To this day, the Pomos remember the time of the drought. They tell the story of how brave Coyote brought water and beautiful fish back to Clear Lake. That is why the Pomos love Coyote.